Hello there everybody, thank you so much for tuning in to today's video. We're going to have a quick tour of my new boat and well, here it is. Um, as you can see, it's uh, a lot smaller than my previous boat. Um, but it does come with a barge pole and a very small uh, little rope to moor up with, so that's always handy. Um, I've got to be honest though, I'm finding it a struggle trying to live on board because first of all I can't get any of my furniture on. I mean, you can imagine the difficulty I'm having trying to get my mattress through a one centimetre wide door at the front. So, uh, <laughs> I'm so sorry, that's not even, that's not even a remote attempt at humour. I did my best, right, let's get on to the proper video. Oh, embarrassing. <laughs> Hello there folks, I'm Dan Brown from sortofinteresting.com and today you're joining me on board good old narrowboat Abel's Ark and it is my absolute pleasure to give you a guided tour of my new boat today. So, we're not going to have a look at how she is now after I've been moving my own furniture on over the last week or so and started the paintwork and stuff. We're going to have a quick tour of what she was like when I originally bought here last week with the original furniture and just have a look at the layout and hopefully this will be a good point to then be able to look back in a month or two's time and compare what she looks like in the future to how she was when I bought it. I'll take time out though to have a closer look at things like the fire and stuff like that so that we can see just what's on here so anybody who's interested can get a better idea of where I am living and how much more of a fully featured boat this is compared to my previous narrowboat Tilly but yeah without further ado let's get stuck in so my friends I am over the moon and very happy to formally introduce you to narrowboat Abel's Ark 23 years old 45 feet long and came to me at a cost of £22,000 the only real thing of note on the outside is the paintwork needs a bit of a tidying up it's not too bad on the blue but the black in beneath the gunnels is clearly in need of some attention which we'll talk about in a future video what i want to dwell on first is this absolutely fantastic and very substantial cover on the stern here which really is like adding another room to the boat i can't tell you how handy it is and how nice it is to sit underneath there because there's seating built into the bow into the stern sorry as well and it's just so nice in the sun it's lovely to be in there and it's nice and warm but when it's been raining it's been nice that you're sort of safe from the elements but it's all that cozy feeling of the rain outside battering against the covers uh, of course we've got the bell on the back which is a nice little feature and pretty much a brand new beta marine engine control panel to go with believe it or not a pretty much brand new beta 38 engine which we'll take a closer look at in just a second for anyone who's familiar with my narrowboat Tilly videos, that view down to the front of the boat, you can see there's a lot more boat there than Tilly had. Um, and yeah, here we are, another view of the uh, stern, so you can see what it's like. And that cover, I, as a short chap, can stand up comfortably underneath that cover. But when we look beneath the deck boards, as I say, this isn't just a, a new engine. This engine went in at a cost of almost £10,000 only last year, and has literally well when i took the keys it had less than 40 hours on the clock so that's how new this engine is it went in last year cost almost 10 grand and literally had less than 40 hours of running time so again very new indeed now as we step down through the stern door you'll see we've got the kitchen immediately two hour left and the Again, this video is intended to show how it was when I bought it. There's already different furniture in the living area there. But if we have a quick look around, you can see we've got the basics of a kitchen here. So my intention is that this hob will come out and then there will be some sort of new framework put here that can have a small oven, grill and two hobs on the top that will fit in this slot here. So that's got to be sorted very soon. And then here, behind the panel that was across here making it just a plain white surface when we walked through originally. This is the inverter and goodness knows what else. Now, sadly, I have had to disconnect this and I just thought I'd wrap everything up so that the wires can't possibly touch in any sort of terrible incident. Um, but basically, the other day, well yesterday morning in fact, while I was on board and everything was going fine, um, suddenly 
this started smoking and beeping and the place filled up with a plastic burning smell and loads of that really blue black dark smoke so i quickly disconnected everything so that's going to need replacing as now none of my plug sockets in the walls work but luckily things like the lighting and that still work independently of whatever this uh, business is all about so that's just something that needs to be sorted very soon you can see we've got all sorts of bits and pieces here we've got fuses and goodness knows what going on but as I say, that I will get fixed and deal with soon. Next, I would like to show you my favourite feature. I always say that the fireplace is really the heart of a boat, or at least to me personally it is. And we've got a very good fire, a very substantial fire here on Abel's Ark. So instead of just showing you this, let's see it in action. So here we have the fire burning away on a nice cold evening. And firstly, it looks the part and oh, it's just... It's so nice and it's so cosy and it throws out so much heat into such a small area as a narrow boat. We've got the vent on the front which just allows more or less air to flow to the fire and we've got the same similar idea but a different type of vent at the top. And then we've got this lovely little stick which you might be able to see there actually shifts around the base of the fire which as you push the stick in and out obviously it means that you can help shake it up and just disturb it a little bit if you want things to roll around and maybe get the fire burning in a different way. We've got the ash pan just at the bottom there, which is, again, obviously a very handy thing to have. And ultimately, with the glass door, throwing out the heat and the light into the room, it's, it's a beautiful, cosy thing. But this, my little eco fan, is a fascinating device. It runs with an electric motor by the looks of it, but entirely powered by heat. And the hotter the fire gets, the faster the fan goes to cycle some of the air around the boat. Lovely stuff. So if we close the fire door and continue our tour, here's the rest of the living room. As I say, when I first bought it, it just had this great big, well, not great big, this standard size sofa bed in it, which should give you a general idea of the length of this section of the boat. We've got the shelving on the back wall there, which I'll be keeping. Um, at the minute, there's a lot of painting going on on board while I'm uh, filming this. Um, the bathroom here, there's a few changes that I'm going to make, but the shower is really good. I'm really pleased with the shower. It literally, once it's running, you would not know, apart from the fact it's a very small shower cubicle, that it wasn't just a standard shower in a standard bricks and mortar house. So that I'm really pleased with. We've got our mirror here, time for a little wave and a hello, it's me. Um, thumbs up, of course. But yeah, sink's all good. Um, it's got that built-in uh, toilet, the pump out toilet, which I'm not a fan of at all. And I've actually moved my portable toilet on uh, just for the time being. Um, and then here's the bedroom. So you can see while we're filming this, we're in the marina, which is why you've got the cars right next to you. It's not some sort of bizarre floating car park. Um, we've got a small wardrobe at the end, little cupboards, all sorts of bits and pieces that are being cleaned up with paintwork and stuff at the moment. But now, my friends, let's step up onto the bow, and I think we'll have a little bit of a canal scene here now. The bow area, as you can see, is an absolutely beautiful little bit of almost outdoor space, but still completely watertight, or at least pretty much waterproof. Now, originally, at some point, the previous owners have had floor tiles here. And I think I might get some slightly, um, well, newer to begin with, but maybe slightly longer uh, pile carpet tiles to go and fill in this space because it's quite a nice effect and it makes it feel a little bit more like an extra room. Um, we've got storage and seating under these little areas here. And then the water pump is just beneath this step at this point here. So as you can see, just below the bow area, we've got the water tank that's all in that section at the back. And then we have got all these goodies left by the previous owner, along with our water pump, which at the moment does not appear to be working. I don't know if it's because of the inverter issues, but after the inverter had gone, the water pump also start, uh, stopped working correctly. So if I turn it on now, it'll just endlessly pump like that. But if you run a tap, then no actual water comes out of the tap. 
I can't hear any water leaking uh, anywhere else from the system. So again, I'm going to get somebody who knows what they're looking at uh, to take a take a nose at this and it may just be something stuck in it. Maybe even something in the water tank itself is blocking the uh, flow of water to the pump. Again, I don't know, and I'm certainly not going to risk starting opening all this up without any knowledge of what I'm doing. Well, I've got so many other odd jobs on board. If we pan the camera around, you can see, well, again, beautiful uh, view of the canal and the blue sky out of the window. But we have got um, a lot of painting going on here. Got to come through, give it one final coat and then paint white gloss on things like the shelves and the details here and there. Um, so yeah, it's going well so far, but again, there's so many jobs to do and so many bits and pieces to get sorted. So thank you very much for joining me for a quick tour today. I hope you enjoyed a look around my new home and hopefully you'll be back to see how it turns out over the coming months. Um, I better do my usual plugs now as something's got to pay for all this now. It's all chaos, but my goodness me, I'm getting it all sorted. Although admittedly, the inverter and the water pump are now extra jobs on top of what I was already doing. So I've taken a step back here. Um, anyway, in all seriousness though, if you'd like to help me out, then please do consider, shameless plug, checking out my short Kindle books available from Amazon, links in the description, or this handy paperback, which is a collection of many of my uh, short narrowboat kindle books my narrowboat life from beginning to end obviously now i've moved back onto a narrowboat that title's not technically true but my narrowboat life on board narrowboat tilly from beginning to end is in here and hopefully you'll enjoy that as i say it's amazing when it was actually printed out as a paperback as i say a collection of some of my shorter kindle books just how big and thick that was but anyway moving swiftly on from that Feel free to add me on Facebook, Twitter, Snapchat, Instagram, all the usual places. Links in the description down below where I post a lot of the sort of boaty canal scenery and boat pictures and little clips every now and then, um, as well as loads more book plugs. Um, but ultimately, thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you have an absolutely fantastic day. Until the next time, my friends, keep it interesting, keep it boat worthy. Never going to get tired of saying that again. And of course, my friends, have a fantastic day. Already said that. And of course, farewell. See you.